So what's going on, YouTubers? It's Matthew, Vic, and I got the JoJo Lena with me. And today we got a special guest all the way from Florida. Yep, today we have Austin Lee Hires with Let It Go Junk Removal out of Florida. And this video is gonna be a little different. We're doing a collaboration and we are answering some of the top questions that people have for businesses. So don't forget to check out his channel and subscribe, guys. Now let's get to the video. What's going on, fellow Earthlings? Austin Lee Hires here with Let It Go Junk Removal. And I'm happy to be doing this collaboration with Sonoma Strong Hauling, Mr. Matthew Vick and the JoJo. It's awesome. I appreciate this opportunity. And uh, yeah, so let's get on with the questions. So we're gonna start off with our very first question. And that is, what is the number one item that you find yourself removing the most? So, Honestly, I believe my number one most removed item is either a couch, like a sofa, or a propane tank. Because we get a lot, a lot of propane tanks. No idea why, but I feel like that's one of the biggest, or one of the number one things we remove in the junk removal industry here in, uh, in my area. Now the number one item we remove, hmm, let me think about it definitely gonna be mattresses and sofas. So if you're just starting a junk removal business, be prepared to move some mattresses and some sofas. I get phone calls at least 20 times a week to remove a couch or a mattress. So I would say couches and mattresses. What is your favorite meal to eat while on the job? To be honest, my favorite meal to eat is a uh, Wawa quesadilla. I usually get the pork and barbecue cheddar cheese quesadilla at Wawa. <laughs> and uh, other than that, my wife packs me a lunch. I eat peanut butter jellies. It's not my favorite, but I do love them. Quesadilla, number one favorite thing to eat while on the job for sure. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I love peanut butter and jelly, but for me, when we're rolling around picking up junk all day and we see a taco truck about 10 miles away, Best believe me and baby Jesus are gonna stop there and get ourselves a burrito. So I'm a burrito type of guy. I like just to grab a burrito and grab the steering wheel and just be rolling eating a burrito. So I'm a burrito guy. I definitely love my burrito. So that's the number one food we pick up while we're doing junk removal. How much money do you find yourself every week spending on gas? Uh, so my one truck right now is spending about 75 a day. So, 75, it would be between 75 and 100 a day, uh, times six days a week. So we're spending about $450 for gas during the week on one truck. So $450 per week, which means $1,800 a month we're spending on gas. I can't wait to get a Tesla Cybertruck. So we don't spend as much as Austin. We spend a little bit less. I would say around $300 a week on the average. It all depends on where the jobs are at. And we just service Sonoma County. It's a small area. So we might head out 30 miles this way, 10 miles this way. So we don't waste a lot on gas. And normally we just line the jobs up when we're in that area. So if we have jobs out in Cloverdale, it's about a 30 mile drive. And we just make sure all of our jobs are lined up that day. So we don't waste that much on gas. We don't like to zigzag around and pick up jobs here and there. We try to just make our time worth it and save on gas. So always just practice when you line up jobs that they're in the same area where you're going that day. So you save money on gas. So yeah, I say about $300 a week is a good average. I know this is gonna happen an awful lot. How often do you find nails in your tires? So how often do you get nails in your tires? Um, so let's see. I get nails in my tire at least once or twice a week, I feel like, um, especially on the, on the worst weeks. So on the worst weeks, I get about one to two nails in my tire. I can get up to three a week. Um, on the best weeks, I get no nails, obviously. So how often do we get nails in the tire? Shit, we from the Bay Area. We might have about five in there right now. Nah, I'm just kidding. We probably get around a nail every week, maybe. It's hit and miss. Pretty much these tires on this bad boy don't really get that many nails, but on the dump trailer, they do. But I'd say an average about one a week, maybe on a bad week, 
two a week, but yeah, I just check the tires every time before I go out. I'll walk around my truck, my trailer, and just see if there's any nails in there. If there is, I'll just pull them out, plug them real quick, or bring them to American Tire Company and get them fixed for free, so yeah. Okay, so this is an interesting question. Um, have you ever peed in a bottle just so you can make it to the next job on time? And uh, the honest truth is yes, I have um, unfortunately whipped out a Gatorade bottle <laughs> several times and, uh, and peed in it, uh, you know, to make it to the job on time. So yeah, that's fun. Then you just throw the bottle out at the landfill. <laughs> oh, hell no. I ain't ever peed in a bottle. But let me tell you one thing I did do one time. We're at a job, we're finishing up the day, the coronavirus is going on, bathrooms are closed, I ate one of those burritos, and guess what happened? I'm gonna give you a second to think. Yeah, it happened. I had to take me a number two with Deuce. And JoJo was in the car, I said, babe, I gotta take me a Deuce, bad. So I'm racing to the gas station or somewhere to go to the bathroom, and I'm looking at these people's yards like, I might have to shit in someone's yard. We're mobbing, right? And my stomach's hurting. I thought, I'm either gonna shit my pants or I'm gonna shit in the bushes. So you know what happened. I grabbed those bandanas off the dashboard and I ran out the car, went to the bushes where a lot of homeless people used to be at. And I was in the bushes like this, just taking a deuce. And JoJo was laughing her ass off. So no, I never peed in a bottle, but I shit in a bush before. What is the most dangerous item you've ever found? So guys, I don't know if you'll believe this or not, but I found a grenade, a live World War II grenade with the pin still in it, ready to blow, literally in in this junk. It was a it was a hoarder house. I mean, hoarder. The, the roof was not only not only was this house a hoarder house, but it was a disgusting wreck too. There were holes in the roof and in the floor. And uh, anyway, I was shoveling away. And I hit something hard, you know, felt like a rock. And I looked down and, and it's a grenade. I thought maybe it's one of those paperweights that had the bottom drilled out. And uh, it wasn't, it was a real grenade. I'm like, oh shit, it's in my hand now. I run out front, I leave it in the grass and then I run away from it. <laughs> I called uh, the non-emergency number and they actually called the emergency number uh, for 911 and they sent out the bomb squad to come remove the grenade. They confirmed that it was a live grenade, so I'm super happy that I didn't blow it up when I hit it with the shovel. But that's the most dangerous thing I've ever removed. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, I never found no grenade or nothing like that, but shit, I'd be scared as hell. The most dangerous item I ever found is when we do homeless cleanups, and out here in the Bay Area, California, there's a lot of homeless, a lot of drug addicts, and they love shooting up. So you gotta be super careful whenever you guys are cleaning up any homeless encampments or anything like that. So I would say syringes is probably the most dangerous thing. Cause you don't wanna get poked and get AIDS or any diseases or anything like that. So I would say syringes is the most dangerous thing I ever found. So as you're watching the video and you hear some of the answers, if you have a unique answer to one of our questions, leave a comment down below and share it. What is the funniest item you've ever found? I guess it's like, it, it's only funny because of the place I found it. So we, we knocked down this entire mobile home and I'm raking the dirt to get up all the small debris. And as I'm raking the dirt with, with this tractor, I look down and there's this giant like two foot long dildo. <laughs> Just huge just laying in the middle of the dirt and I had to get out and uh, take some pictures of it And I'll see if I can find some if if I did I'll send them to, to you Matt and, and you can put them in the video Anyway, that's the funniest thing I ever moved was a giant like two foot long dildo uh, It was laying in the dirt after we knocked down the mobile home so hilarious now the most funniest thing we ever found was we're at a squatter house Squatters were living there. It was a hoarder house. A lady lived in Oakland and these people just took over the property. It was trash, garbage, trash everywhere. Probably one of the worst jobs we ever did. And Jojo comes out of the building from the bottom floor and she's holding this thing in her hand. I'm like, Jojo, what are you holding? She thought it was like a pencil sharpener or something. I was like, Jojo, that's a damn crack pipe. She had no idea. She's like, what's this? What's this? She thought it was something but she didn't know it was a crack pipe. So I would say crack pipe is probably the most funniest thing we ever found because Jojo had no idea what it even was. She was like just innocent, like, what is this? Look at this, what is this? Oh, that's a damn crack pipe. Put that shit down and don't hit it. So that's the funniest thing. What is your favorite, Star Wars or Marvel? 
Star Wars or Marvel? Um, <laughs> we asked this question because like, you know, DC and Marvel is usually the answer, but right now I've been watching a lot of Star Wars and a lot of Marvel because of Disney Plus. And honestly, I don't know which one I would choose. I think I would choose Star Marvel? Starvel? Can we call it Starvel? Because <laughs> I don't want to choose one really. I know it's my question. Uh, I'm such a nerd. Um, so yeah, honestly, let's get let's get rid of Marvel. I, I would choose Star Wars. I love the lightsabers and the action and, and all the badassness that goes on. Anyway, so that's that's what I would choose. Star Wars. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys when it comes to watching Star Wars or Marvel. I don't like either one. I like stuff that's real, like Shameless. That's my type of show to watch. Okay, so that may be your opinion, but mine, I'm gonna go with Marvel. I like Marvel because they're superheroes, and you always need a good superhero, like now. No time better than now to have a new superhero. We're in a cape called Captain Corona. So tell me guys, what are your visions for the future? So my future plans are to grow my YouTube channel as large as possible and create a stream of income through that. So anybody that can subscribe, please do. So that's, that's my vision for the future. I also have um, something else coming in the plans, but I don't want to put it on video just yet. So I'll give you a little hint there. Now my future plans are to get a couple more of these bad boys and be able to get off the trucks send people out and have my feet kicked up, drinking like a margarita or something, and making money not doing nothing as my belly gets bigger. That's my future plans. Okay guys, tell us, what was your very first official junk removal job? What was your first official job? So my first official job came from Craigslist and uh, the lady gave me a call. She was like, hey, I got some scrap metal I need you to remove. And I'm like, yeah, I'm there. Like, heck yeah, my first call and it's from Craigslist. It didn't cost me any money. It was amazing. I get there and the lady has all the scrap metal, dirt bikes and four wheelers that don't work and other pipes and miscellaneous stuff that her son was working on and, and just never got it out of her yard. So I came there, I removed all of that scrap metal for about 95 bucks at the time, but that was my minimum. So after I, re I removed the scrap metal, I went and sold it for like another 90 bucks. I sold the four-wheeler uh, frame for 50 bucks and scrapped out the rest of the metal. So yeah, it was pretty awesome first job and I was really excited and after that job, I had so much motivation to just continue going on with this business. And we've had our ups and downs and our ebbs and flows, but you guys just have to continue going on and pushing and pushing hard. And when I mean push hard, I mean you're gonna complain, you're gonna whine, uh, just don't quit. Now, my very first job I ever did was off Craigslist. I put an ad up. That same day, I got a phone call. It was for a realtor, and it's my favorite realtor until this day. I headed over to the job. I bid the job, and I had no idea what I was doing. The garage was full of stuff. I think it was three truckloads, and I was scared. I was nervous. I told her, if you pay the dump fees and give me $200 cash on top of it, I'll handle it. She said, yes, so I'm heading to the dumps. And I'm happy, but I'm scared at the same time because I had no idea if I had enough cash in my bank account to cover the dump fee. So I'm pulling up, nervous, and thank God I did. So that was the first job I ever did. It was for my favorite realtor. And uh, she calls me till this day. And uh, yeah, my first job off Craigslist. What is the most valuable item you've ever found? The most valuable item I found was some gold and silver in a house. Uh, it was literally in the bottom of a closet, like the, a bunch of junk. And it was a box about this big and it, it was full of silver. So about $3,000 worth of silver. And then in that box was one gold coin, which was worth about $1,500. So about $4,500 I found uh, gold and silver in this house that we did a complete clean out in. And uh, it was pretty amazing. Now that's a good question. The most valuable thing I ever found. There's so many damn things when you find in junk removal. We got gold, silver, baseball cards, autographs. Actually, this one realtor lady, I showed up to her house and her husband left her for eight months and she wanted all this stuff gone. She said, I don't care what you do with it. You can take it, sell it, give it away. And it was a great day. 
all the stuff we loaded up. It was all resellable stuff. And uh, yeah, I would say you find jewelry, gold, baseball cards, people pass away, they leave stuff behind. You find guns, all kinds of stuff. So there's not one valuable item. We got a whole bunch of them. So, yeah. How many times have you not received payment? So I have probably not received payment. Let me think, let me think, let me think. One, two, three, I could count on my hands, literally. It's been about 10 times in the three years. About 10 times in the three years I did not receive payment. And um, we have fixed all those problems now and we don't really leave the job unless we collect payment right then and there. So yeah, that was definitely a mistake on my part um, because we weren't collecting payment same day or we would pick up the dumpster that we rented out and uh, then dump the container already and, and the person hadn't paid for it yet. They never call us back and they never answer their phone, so. Now when it comes to taking payment, you best believe we getting paid. I've always gotten paid no matter what. One time I got a bad check, but believe this, if you don't wanna pay, I'm letting you know right now, we gonna come get that money. So yeah, we never been burnt yet. Thank God, I'm gonna knock on some wood, but we always get paid. Because we always show up to the job, do the job, you get paid right afterwards. We have one check bounce. Other than that, maybe it's all just luck. But yeah, we gonna take payment, we gonna get that money. How often do you receive tips? How often do you get tips? We get tips probably three times a week, three to four times a week. Uh, sometimes it's a $5 tip, sometimes it's a $100 tip. It really all depends on what area we're working in and how generous the person is. But all tips are the same to me. What tips means to me is that the customer realizes that we bust our butts. We're providing a home service. We should get tipped. So anybody starting a junk removal business, I think it's okay to expect to get tipped. Um, we do charge a price and that price is enough to make profits, but it does feel good to get tipped out there. It makes you feel like you were worth something that day, like they actually appreciated you. Now when it comes to getting tips, we get tips all the time. $100 bills, $20 bills, we get muffins, we get donuts, ladies bring us coffee outside, so I would say at least once to twice a week we get tips so yeah that's why i love junk removal you never know you're over there working hella hard and stuff they might think you're working for someone else but they don't know you're the owner of the business and they want to tip you so i'm always up for it and i always 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 split my tips with whoever i'm working with so i say yeah we get, we get tipped a lot guys everyone wants to know the answer to this one what is the most money you've made in one day all right, so the most money the business has ever pulled in in one day was probably around $15,000. Um, we had a really, really big job at one point that uh, is on hold right now ever since coronavirus started. But we made $15,000 in one day, and the day before that we made $9,000. So that's my best two days in the junk removal business, and it just goes to show how much you can really make if you push yourself. Now, is he being for real? Did you say $15,000 in one day? Now, that's why I call hauling and balling. The most we ever made in one day, I would say in four hours, was $4,500. Man, I don't know how the hell you did 15 grand, man. But that's hauling and balling for real. So the most we ever made in one month was around $48,000. So can you make good money doing junk removal? Hell yeah. Can you get to hauling and balling the first year? Hell yeah. What do you find the most challenging about this job? Um, so the biggest obstacle in business, I think in any business, that I've come to find out is is hiring people, the employees, um, finding good help. That is literally my biggest obstacle. I don't know if it's true for, for you, Matt, or, or for anybody else, but like literally it's so hard to find good help around here um, that I can trust and that, that, that my customers can trust and, and that works hard. They have a good work ethic. I have a really good work ethic. And when I hire people, I expect them to be just as good or better. And sometimes I realize that is not really realization. <laughs> that is not really how it's gonna happen. So now I just expect my employees to give me at least 90% of what I give my business as far as the, the, the effort that's shown. 
Um, so yeah, that's the hardest obstacle to overcome is hiring people for me, uh, getting the right people in here to do the job so I can finally step away from working in the business and start working on the business. Now I'm gonna have to agree with Austin, finding employees, where else am I gonna find another JoJo, someone that works as hard as her, or the redneck, someone that shows up on time, works their ass off, that's motivated, that's polite to the customer. You ain't gotta ask them to do something, they just do it. They hop out the vehicle, start backing you up, they're grabbing the tools already. You're just sitting there just getting stuff done. So yeah, finding good employees is the most difficult thing to find. And when you find them, make sure you take care of them, because they'll take care of you guys. What's your number one way to get your phone to ring? So my number one way to get business has been so far Google Ads. Um, it is literally the most expensive way to get business, but it is my number one way to get business. I have done signs, I have done marketing, I've done going out to realtors, I've gone out to property managers, I've gone out to apartment managers. Um, literally, I've tried it all and I still do it all. I do every single thing that I just said. Um, plus more. I do Facebook, I do Instagram, I, I don't do Craigslist anymore. Um, but I pretty much do everything that's free and available out there to make that money. Um, but Google, I gotta say, it's the one that brings me the most business, the most consistent business is Google for sure. Now I'm gonna have to say Facebook is probably one of the number one things and also ranking high on Google. We rank high on Google organically and we get a lot of phone calls from just people on Facebook and Google. So I don't have just one, I have two, so yeah. How much would you say you spend on advertising? I spend about $2,500 a month on Google advertisements to bring in enough profits to pay my people and, uh, and keep everything rolling smoothly. So yeah, I, I spend money to make money and that's just what I have to do in my area being in such a small town and growing with this town is something that I'm doing as well. So in the future, I won't have to use Google ads, but for now, I'm just gonna have to stick to it. Now for the last two months, we spent zero, zero dollars. We do stuff organic, but today is a new day and we spent $75 on a Facebook boost. So I would say we don't spend much money on advertising. We just got a lot of word of mouth, a lot of realtors, a lot of property managers, a lot of repeat customers. So we're really lucky we don't need to spend that much money. We got the big decals and uh, we got signs, we got all that stuff, but really we don't spend much. Probably in the last nine months, I think it's under $800 or $900 we spent on advertising. So. Tell me your craziest customer story. Ah, oh, shoot. Like, like, what do you mean crazy? Like dirty crazy or like ugly crazy or like mean crazy or just crazy crazy? Cause like, I think I've had all of those. All right, all right, for example, here's one crazy customer. So this is one type of crazy. Uh, so we, we have different size containers um, and sometimes we go to a junk removal with a bigger container and we will tell the person a price. So I told this lady, hey, it's gonna be 500 to, to get all this stuff out of here that you just showed me and I'll take this, this and that. And so we, we, we load it all up and um, she, she sees that the container is not completely full to the top. And she's like, oh, well, you know, there's still more room, hold on. And while I'm taking payment from her husband, she's running back and forth in the house and grabbing junk herself and throwing it in the container. But she had a budget she couldn't spend over. So I would be glad to take that junk if she would be glad to pay for it. But she was literally just telling us that that we need to throw more junk in there and that this, you know, after we already agreed on the price in the very beginning. So that's like one type of crazy. And then there's a, there's another type of crazy where they're just so dirty, disgusting. I can't even imagine. Like if, if somebody were to live, these houses that they live in are so disgusting. Uh, it just makes them crazy. I've been in houses where there's like just thousands of cockroaches and like, ugh, never again. So that's another type of crazy that, that I've dealt with. Out in the field, guys, there's gonna be all kinds of crazy that you deal with and, uh, and, and you're gonna have to just smile and nod uh, or just drive away and be like, bitch, you ain't filling up my container no more. <laughs> now the craziest customer we ever had was, we're in the city. 
we pulled up to this job and this lady had ducks hey i think she even had a goat outside maybe i'm tripping but she had ducks outside it looked like a damn farm we pull up she had trash everywhere so i'm walking to go see what she needed gone i'm walking by trash over here trash over here this lady smoking a cigarette she's right behind me all breathing down my neck and stuff we walk to the backyard and there's a pile so i load that pile up i'm done i need to take payment she pulls this, I can't find my purse. I can't find my checkbook. She starts flipping out, like just cuckoo. I mean, I don't know if she's smoking that pipe or what, but she's over there saying she wants to punch the wall, starts crying a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, lady, I need to get paid. I almost dumped everything in her driveway. Then she found a check. So she wrote me a check, and the first thing I did was went to the bank and made sure it cleared. So it did clear, and that would probably be the most craziest customer I ever had to deal with. She was just crazy. I can't find my wallet. I'm gonna punch the wall. Just going cuckoo, you know what I'm saying? Breathing down my neck with a cigarette in her mouth. It was just horrible. The whole house was like trash. But you know what? I got paid. Tell me guys, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, that's another good question because I, I am one of those people that look into the future and I love to um, kind of picture where I'm going to be in five years. So where I picture myself is literally uh, being huge on YouTube, like hundreds of thousands of YouTubers in, in five years from now. Um, I picture my, my new business being open, which I'm not going to mention yet because I I don't want to <laughs> and then I picture my junk removal uh, business just running itself and, and having a few managers in there uh, being at like one or two million a year with the junk removal business or more and um, just really that and and be, being able to take some more time off to spend with my kids because in five years I'll be 35 and I think that's about time to, to really just start uh, making sure I spend time with my kids before they get too old and uh, and, and all that time has passed. So yeah guys, subscribe to my channel at Let It Go Junk Removal and also subscribe to The King of Junk and Little Man because we're gonna be putting some freaking awesome videos up there. It's pretty much gonna be for entertainment and that's what I wanna do um, in the future. Now where do I see myself in five years? Hmm, not in California. I'm thinking about traveling around the 50 states and see what we like best. Maybe South Carolina, maybe Montana, Maybe Washington, maybe Florida, I don't know yet. But me and the JoJo are gonna hop in that RV and just roll on out. So if you're a subscriber, leave a comment down below what state you guys are in, and maybe we'll stop by and see you guys. So thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to Matthew Vick and uh, Sonoma Strong Hauling, because they're freaking ballin'. <laughs> hauling and ballin'. Hauling and ballin'.